Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. You know, when it comes to sin, there's basically two major errors we can make when considering sin. One is in thinking too lightly of sin, of thinking too lightly of sin. That is not really taking sin all that seriously. Um, and even we as Christians can fall into this trap. We uh, perhaps don't really uh, think about the dangers of sin. We're not really careful and avoiding sin and we forget about the dangerous effects of sin and maybe sometimes become lured by sin and tricked by sin and deceived by sin but the other danger is that we might make too much of sin to feel like well if i've sinned and there's no hope for me that there is no remedy for the guilt that i feel in connection to my sin and both of these are dangerous errors that we can make as we reflect on sin Fortunately, Psalm 51 helps us to have a balanced view when it comes to sin. Psalm 51 was written by David at a time in which he had sinned tremendously. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba uh, to try to get away with it. He had her husband killed in battle. Uh, just a real grievous sin that he committed. And he writes this psalm in response to that sin. And in doing so, we learn a lot about sin and how to properly view sin. Now, for those who might think of sin too lightly, uh, we can see in this psalm really the grave effects that sin has in our lives, especially for those who are sensitive to God and sensitive about spiritual things. For one, and, and this is one of, the one of the most major things about it, is that it makes us impure in God's sight. Uh, in verse 2, he says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Uh, which implies that he needed cleansing, which implies that he uh, had become impure. Uh, verse 7 as well, he says, Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And so um, when we fall into sin, there's there's impurity connected to that. And, uh, and so that's one of the effects. Also, sin can cause guilt to just take over our minds. Now we see this in verse 3, where he says, For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And he had committed this sin in connection to Bathsheba, and it was always before him. It was always on his mind. He, he couldn't shake the guilt from that particular sin. And that's what sin can do for us, or do to us. It can really rob our minds. It can uh, take our minds captive to where we feel so guilty. That's all we can think about. That's all we can uh, reflect on is is what we have done wrong. Maybe we said a word that was improper towards someone. Maybe we mistreated someone. Uh, could be a whole list of things that we did, but because we feel so bad, it's all we can think about. And it, and it takes over our minds, which robs us of the joy of walking in God's presence and, and keeping our minds fixed on Him. Also, um, the sin uh, is ultimately against uh, the creator of all things. As we see in uh, verse 4, it says, Against you, you only I have sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. David recognized that it wasn't primarily towards Bathsheba or primarily towards her husband that he had sinned. Ultimately, it was a sin against God because God has his own order, his own law, his own instructions for mankind. And when we sin, yes, it does injure other people. And yes, we do uh, cause other people to become victims of our, of our sin in some cases. But ultimately, it's a violation against God in his created order. And so that's a huge thing. That's a very grievous thing to sin against the creator of the universe, the creator of all things. Uh, so that's one of the effects of sin. Uh, it also robs us of joy and gladness. In verse 8, uh, David longs to have joy and gladness again. He says, Make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. And then in verse 12, he talks about wanting the joy of his salvation restored back to him. And, and that's true. When, when we commit a sin, because of the guilt, because of the way that it, it disrupts our spiritual life, it robs us of the joy and the gladness that we have in walking in the presence of the Lord. Because uh, it, 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 in a sense... Uh, builds a, a wall uh, between us and God 
in a sense, at least in, in the way that we view things. It contaminates our heart. In verse 10, the first part of verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Whenever we are involved in sin, it taints our heart a little bit. Um, it, it causes us to become a little bit impure in the heart. And every time we commit a sin, it makes it easier for us to commit the sin in the future because we've basically crossed the threshold in which it becomes harder and harder to resist that temptation because we've already given in to that temptation. And David's desire was that he would have a clean heart again, a pure heart uh, that wouldn't be have this tendency towards this sin that he had. It also disrupts our steady walk before God. Also found in verse 10, in the latter part, it says, And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Help me to get back on the horse again. Help me to get back on that steadfast path with you, Lord. Uh, whenever we sin, we might, be, we might have been walking steadily with the Lord, but then we trip, then we fall. And then we got to put in all the effort to try to get back and in, in, in walking that steadfast path again. And again, it, it disrupts our walk before God. And then also, also it makes us uh, positionally guilt, guilty before God. Verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Now we'll find that there is a remedy for all of these things, but these are some bad effects that sin has in our lives. It can make us in, impure in God's sight. It can make us, uh, make, it can take over our mind because of the guilt. It can, or we recognize that it's ultimately against the creator of all things. It robs us of our joy and gladness. It contaminates our heart. It disrupts our steady walk with the Lord. And it makes us positionally guilty before Him. So it's a very serious thing. For those who might think too lightly of sin, that don't think it's a really, really big deal, they don't really watch out for sin, uh, they, they got to recognize that, yeah, no, sin is very serious. And it has some very grievous effects in a person's life. But we also have to remember the other side. We don't want to think too much of sin in that if we commit a sin, that that's the end of the world, that that's the end. And we might as well just give up our spiritual walk and just walk away from the Lord. We also need to remember other things that this uh, psalm tells us. For one, that God can purify us. That's what he was asking for in, in verse 7. He wouldn't ask for that if he didn't think that God could purify him. Uh, God can cleanse us also in verse 7. Again, if he didn't think that was possible, he wouldn't ask for it. Our iniquities can be blotted out before God. That is, they can be taken away, as said in verse 9. God can create within us a clean heart. He can bring us back to the state of innocence uh, as we submit to him. Uh, he can also help us get on a steadfast walk again. It might take a little bit to get back going again, but the Lord can strengthen us and help us to get back on the path, to get back on the, the straight and narrow, and to get back walking a, a steady walk with Him. And uh, that's implied in verse 10. He can restore our joy. Uh, verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation. God can definitely bring that joy back again as we begin to uh, walk with Him once again. And He can deliver us from the guilt. In verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltiness. Again, he asked that because he felt that God could deliver him from that blood guiltiness. And we definitely know that's true because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. In 1 John chapter 1 there, it talks about how the, how the blood of Christ can cleanse us from all our, all our transgressions as we confess our sins to the Lord. Uh, he believed that that could be done, and it definitely can be done. We especially know that on this side of the cross. So it's not the end of the of the world is not the end of our spiritual walk if we fall into sin. That's something we need to remember as well. God can purify us. He can cleanse us. He can blot out our iniquities. He can create within us a clean heart. He can help us have a steadfast walk again. He can restore our joy. And he can deliver us from guilt. So that's, that's the good news. So what is required of us? What does God require of us? We know what sin does. We know what God does in connection to sin and what he can do to overcome sin in our lives. But what is required of us, as is found in this psalm, is simply to have a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. He just said, you know, God's not pleased ultimately with sacrifices. What he wants is someone who's broken hearted, who's contrite, who, who is repentant of his sin, he realizes he's done wrong, and now he wants to turn to the Lord. Um, 
sacrifices were required under the old law, but mere sacrifices wouldn't cut it. It's kind of like if you were to sin against your spouse, do something bad against your spouse. Um, it would take more than just a dozen roses to make everything better. Uh, the spouse would want to know that you've you've had a change of heart and that you really feel sorry for what you did and that you really uh, want to change your ways. And the same thing is true with God. It's not that we can just go and say, well, you know, I'll, I'll say a few words uh, in connection to this sin and God will just wipe it away. And you're not really repentant. You don't really feel bad for what you did. Uh, God is looking for us to really have a change of heart. He really wants us to see the seriousness of our sin, to really want to turn from our sin. And to come to him and plead that he would forgive us of our sins. And then he'll come in and purify us, cleanse us, blot out our iniquities, create in us a clean heart, help us with a steadfast walk, restore our joy, and deliver us from guilt. And so, as we can see, Psalm 51 gives us a lot of information about sin. And it should help us to think of sin in the right way. Not to, not to think too less of sin, but not to think too much of sin. To realize that sin is something that we should avoid. But it's not something that we can't be uh, delivered from if we do fall into it. God is there to help us uh, as we truly turn to him with a repentant heart. So these are some things to reflect on as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.